The protests in Egypt are increasingly being portrayed by Western media outlets to be about freedom and democracy. But are they really? If so, why are the signs carried by the protesters written in English? Why do they have the support of the far left here in America? Why are those who support the ouster of Mubarak not concerned about the Muslim Brotherhood? Ted Shubat, son of a former Muslim terrorist who used to belong to the Muslim Brotherhood, says everyone needs to back up, take a deep breath, and look at the history of the region. Whether Mubarak holds on to power or if he gives some or all of it to Omar Suleiman, Shubat says, people need to understand that either choice is much better than the alternative. Mubarak has suppressed the Muslim Brotherhood, and that actually preserves freedom in many places. Shubat points to some indisputable facts that make his case. For one thing, he says, the world gave Gaza democratic elections, and they chose Hamas, a Muslim Brotherhood group. The statistics tell us that the majority of Egypt's population supports the Islamist, Shubat said. Don't take my word for it, he says. Look at the Pew poll results. If 59% of Egyptians support Islamists, that means that the Muslim Brotherhood would likely win any election there. When so-called democracies become a threat to freedom, they're not truly democracies. Theodore Ted Shubat is the son of Walid Shubat, a former PLO terrorist. At age 16, Ted released his first book, In Satan's Footsteps, which has been followed up with For God or For Tyranny which is now available. Ted grew up in the United States of America in Northern California, attending the public school system. Because of his conservative and religious upbringing, he often struggled with his teachers and fellow students. He personally witnessed Holocaust denial, anti-Semitism, and anti-Zionism in the schools, and his defense of Israel and the Jewish people made him a victim of ridicule and mockery. At such a young age, Ted was inspired due to the challenges and the frustrations that he faced from the public schools he attended. Not only was he bombarded with criticism for his conservative and religious beliefs, but they also attempted to squelch his expression by labeling him with a psychological condition known as Asperger's syndrome. Though the educational community thought it a stigma, Ted took it with pride, since it is said that Bill Gates and Albert Einstein were also diagnosed with Asperger's, a personality that includes such positive human behaviors as loyalty, honesty, and bluntness. Ted is the primary contributor for this amazing work of research and polemic, for God or for tyranny. It is a timely work based on the current state of our nation and the pivot point in the direction that America might take. What is even more amazing is Ted Shubat was only 18 years old when this, his second book, went into publication.